Go. You ready? Okay, yep. all right. All right, so we're back for another episode of uh, Cutler Cast, and we have a very special guest who is actually my guest poser this weekend at the Jay Cutler Desert Classic, and probably the only one besides myself that ever guest posed at the show. Hunter, welcome to the show, man. Thank you. That's an honor. I didn't know that fact. Yeah. That's pretty cool to know. Yeah, so you've been uh, now with us for a few years now, and uh, a couple years. Yeah, second time back, for yeah. sure. As you so. say, you're becoming the regular guest poser. Loving it's like a it. yearly thing now. Yeah, I'm going to come out here... Uh, Guest pose for Jay, eat some good food, train. It's always a good time. Vegas, Vegas. is always a good It's spot, great for bodybuilding, right? man. It's uh, If you can keep your blinders on like you were able to all those years, it's pretty cool well, for it's, bodybuilding. It's funny because uh, this morning, you know, he, your dad sent me yeah, the picture, yeah. right? And it was uh, it was myself. I think that was Lee. before I even went pro, man. I was itty Well, bitty. I was kind of like, you know, he was, the, he was the furthest one back, and we were both out angling. And I said to Lee, I said, man, you know, we're out angling Hunter, and it's a big difference now because why do we look bigger than Hunter? Yeah, I said, uh, I actually said, I was like, Lee's out angling me. Jay, you're just way bigger than me then still. Yeah. That's you were, crazy. You were big then, still. That was probably like six or seven years ago. I'm trying to, I was trying to recall yeah, when was it, it was. Was it an Arnold before? I okay, went pro okay. For sure. That was in that Columbus Pros gym. Yeah, so I just did his podcast. You know, I did your dad's podcast, and obviously, uh, you know, in your headquarters, and you know, we're going to get into some questions about that. But I was kind of looking out for you in the back, and you, you know, you have your own gym, and you went and trained at the yeah. gym, right? When we went, we ate to- his gummy bears. I was about to say, really, this, this bastard and his crew came and ate all my candy. <laughs> he has, so he has like a stash of gummy bears there. So everyone came in and. At the end of the at the end of the training session, Dana Lynn writes a note. We're sorry we ate your gummy bears. The late night crew. Thank you for is leaving. That, is that a secret of down at the your uh, gym? Is the gummy bear? No, we just of... like had him in there because I have my daughter up with me oh, in the gym okay, a lot, okay. and then like you know I'll be an off season, me like a little snack and asshole. Oh, while see, I'm training. see, see, I did. He blame the daughter. Yeah. You know they're his. Dude, you have kids. You got to use them for excuses. You don't want to do something. My kid's sick. You don't want to do that. No, I got to take my daughter there. Sorry. <laughs> great so you train at your own facility i mean you have your own gym and what is that what is that like i mean some people need that motivation to be around other athletes and i mean i'm sure you have people in there training with you but what made you decide to be like you know what uh i want to have my own place so having my own place kind of came you know from a couple things like it was getting to the point where you know i wasn't getting bothered in the gym because the gyms i train at you know people respected me and stuff but it was getting to the point where, you know, like the gyms around me were getting busy. I'd be going to this one to train that, you know, this mm-hmm. one to train this. You know, when I had to go to this one, you know, I wasn't at that one a lot and got a little bit more attention than I'd like. So it's one of those things that I wanted to have my own space just to have everything in one spot. And then the second thing is I'm an equipment nerd, man. I just love training and to have like all of this stuff because everything in that gym's hand picked. Like I, uh, you know, hunted it all down with my dad and a friend. So. You know, to have it all out there hand-picked, like, I just, like, it's it's fun for me to how, go out there and play with it. How big is the space? So, it's 5,500 square five feet, but six. it's got a 50-foot ceiling, so it looks way bigger than, you know. So, 50. is it part of the, it's part of the warehouse then, pretty It is. Much. Okay. Yeah, so we have a, you, you need to come out sometime, man, like, for a fitness yeah. expo or something and get you out there. But uh, it's two stories of office, and then it's the 5,000-square-foot gym with a uh, full ceiling, and then it's the warehouse space right okay. after that. And it's a freestanding building free you guys standing built, building. yeah. Do you think do you think your progress is different when you're training in a private gym or do you get or was it better when you were out in the public gym? No, I do. And, you know, because like I travel enough now to where I still train at public gyms and, you know, granted, it's on the road. So I'm not like super locked in, but I say not super locked in. It's just one of those things, you know, you always back off a little on the road, right? You don't yeah, want to hurt yourself. But um, yeah, just having my own space really kind of gave me the ability to go in, you know, go like this, you know, put my music on, not worry about anything, be in you know, my zone and go for it. And then for the longest time, you know, I've backed off it a little bit now just because of uh, the amount of anxiety it was starting to give me. But um, I was a logbook guy for the longest time. You know, every single time I walked in there, I knew exactly what I was doing. I knew exactly exactly what was going on the bar. And I knew that if I didn't do one more rep with it or did the same amount of reps with five more pounds, it was a fucked up day. I didn't do what I was supposed to do. And that was that. And that's a hard thing to do if you're going to different gyms and training on different equipment. So that was a really big thing for me was to be able to really lock in and just grunt, grunt it out and really track my progress. Who's allowed way. to train at the gym? Labrada employees and the homies. Okay. Yeah. So basically, and, ma- and manager Matty's like he yeah. came. I mean, I guess Matt's Matt's a homie. We, <laughs> we, 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 we can give him that. All right. So your best piece of equipment in your gym? What was the hardest one to find? Okay. And what is your favorite, uh, whether it's old school or new school uh, equipment? So the rarest piece that we have out there, the hardest one to find, is probably uh, that Magnum Biangular Row, the plate-loaded one. Okay. 
that was pretty hard to find. And like, I just uh, recently, you know, saw someone looking for him uh, that owns a couple of gyms and he was willing to pay $8,000 a piece for him. He's looking for three and he still hasn't found them. So, you know, that's, that's one piece. And then <coughs> my personal favorite out there, and it kind of goes with, you know, my shortcomings as a bodybuilder is my plate loaded Nautilus pull down. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like that piece has really, you know, packed some, some meat on my lower lats over the last two years. And, you know, it's no secret my back was an extraordinary weak point, you know, a couple of years ago that we've brought up in that building. So it's been it's been cool. I'm I'm actually excited because we have the man behind the best gym on the planet sitting over here behind us. And I'd want to are you understanding what equipment he's talking about or, you know, he knows Do you have it in your gym. No. OK, so it's wow. hard to find. I'm shocked because Steve, he, you know, I can't tell me times he's called me and been like, where'd you travel to? What did you see? What can Tell I buy? Me what to get? Yes. Yeah. Every time I travel, every time I go no, somewhere, I've been, I've been to Steve's spot a couple of times, and I think the only reason he doesn't have it is because there's literally nowhere to put anything else. But he's the amount of cool he's, stuff he he's has. He's swapping, is he's swapping everything out. So I mean, he's always looking for the new next. To, so are you changing out equipment currently? Or are you pretty much happy with what you have? And do you leave? these uh, pieces loaded with your weights or are you respectful to your Labrada employees? That's my question. And I, you laugh. And so I know what the answer is. No, <laughs> everything gets put up when I train, everything has a spot. I am OCD. I'm the guy sending, okay. I'm the guy sending company wide emails with pictures <laughs> that people <laughs> who didn't put this two and a half pound no, back. Not no. like that. Like who, who left like, you know, like six dumbbells out and bands on this and this or that. No, like when we train, we put everything up. Um, you know, we have more than enough, like, weight for it, but I have this little, like, rolling weight tree. If you watch any of my videos, that it, it, it can fit 1045s on it, and I just kind of roll that thing around with me from station to station. That's pretty cool. I mean, listen, I've known you for a long time. I don't know if you – I think I remember the first time we met, but I want to ask you, do you remember the first time that we actually met? First time that we actually met was – I want to say when you were backstage at a show with my dad, you were, like, in a back room, and it I was, was just you. You were sitting down. Uh, probably, I think 07 yeah. Texas Lee Labrada show, I believe. I was the guest poser. I had just won the Olympia. Yep. And you came back with like probably three or four of your friends. You were, I think you were 17 at the time. I don't even know if I was that old. Yeah, I was, I was You were in high school because it was yeah. all your buddies. And I came back and I think I was getting ready to go on and we met. And I never imagined because I remember pictures of, your mom and dad holding you as a baby at one of the events in the magazines, right? That and Arnold Classic picture, me and my little three-piece suit getting wheeled with my mom. Dude, I, would, I just sent it every year. But like I remember, times, I every remember when you were a baby, and I mean, listen, I, I grew up, your dad was the first guest poser I ever witnessed at one of my shows. So I was in Schenectady, New York, and I reminded him of this, and he was the guest poser. I remember looking at him, and your dad was a smaller stature, right? But he when looked he, like a tennis player in his warm-ups, dude, man. When he, when he <laughs> took, I was like, oh, you know, he's, I was kind of like, man, he doesn't look as big. And he was like second in the world then. And I said, when he took his shirt off, I couldn't believe it. He got up on stage, and I'm like, okay, this is why he's one of the best in the world. And I remember he was so polite and he, he was so respected, right? And he was known as one of the most, the better posers. And I mean, he challenged Lee Haney 1990, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, he questioned Ahead in prejudging, yeah. Yeah, he, he was ahead, yeah. Uh, so now, you know, you're one of the elite where the son becomes, you know, a top level professional. Big shoes to fill. How do you feel, like, what's your... I mean, what are you, with a dad like that, with the accolades, we talked about yeah. this. What's what's it like? I mean, what is it like at your house in high school? Or like, when do you realize your dad is- I literally like, was just going to say, when did you realize, wow, my dad's my dad, but- He's yeah. somebody really important in as fans. Because you have you have a bro, you have brothers. Yeah, I got brothers. brothers. Okay, yeah. yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. So, and you're the I'm the oldest, but you're the only bodybuilder, right? I am. Okay. Although the the, young, the youngest one's caught the bug bad, man. And how old I'll is he? I'll show you some pictures of him. He's 22 now. Okay. And he's a uh, he got he got the football player build. I told him we like switched bodies because he loves bodybuilding, but I love playing football. But you football. but you played football. Yeah, we'll talk he's, about that. He's he's six foot six foot one and like 240 right now, and he's growing. So it's it's fun to see. But, um, yeah, so I obviously have gotten asked this question a lot, so I've had a lot of time to, like, think about it and answer it. So I think the first thing is, you know, talking about what it was like at home growing up. You know, Lee 
was always dad at home. And I'm going to preface this with saying I call my dad Lee in business settings. People have gotten bothered by it or find it disrespectful, whatever. I, I find it weird to be a 32-year-old man calling my dad dad in public. You know, so take the take that for what you will. So, But growing up, Lee was always dad. He was never a bodybuilder. He was never this famous athlete. He was a normal dad who went yeah. to his job and then came home and we ate dinner together every night. You know, he pushed me, you know, in the sports that I chose to play. He pushed me in school. You know, straight A's were expected, you know, grounded if not. You know, playing hockey growing up, you know, I was never like, it was never like a baseball dad mm -hmm. thing, but you know, like whatever I was passionate about, he pushed that passion. Mm -hmm. And so he nurtured that, you know, competitive edge from like a really young age. And then, you know, growing up, we'll tell the football story kind of in line mm -hmm. with this one, you know, if you will. So growing up, you know, playing hockey, um, it was never that big of a deal to be, you know, like four foot nothing and uh, like 85 pounds. I was a scrappy forward. It was fine. It worked. But, you know, played my seventh grade football season. Absolutely loved it. I started on the eighth grade team, eighth grade A team in seventh grade, but I was like four foot 11 and 85 pounds. It wasn't a good thing. We have this picture in my dad's office and Lee is, I'm going to give him five, six, but he's five, five on a good day. <laughs> and I'm literally up to his shoulder in this picture. In his I'm office. thinking of the mighty ducks right now. <laughs> You're the little guy. <laughs> Love, that movie. Love that movie. So I needed to put weight on. So, you know, obviously I knew my dad was a bodybuilder, right? So, like, let, okay, dad, how do I put weight on? So, all through middle school and high school, I was taking, you know, this lunch sack to school with me every single day, you know, eating leftovers from dinner at lunch, you know, peanut butter jellies, you know, the whole, the whole nine yards. Like, really, truly, like, I always joke around with this, but I always say I was, like, more on my shit from the time I was, like, 14 or 15 years old on than, you know, most people are, like, in their 20s when they're like, oh, I'm going to be a bodybuilder. You know, it was just something that I wanted to do because it was always important to me, not for, you know, bodybuilding at first, but it was important to me for football. I was like, I wanted to get better at football. I get better at football by gaining weight, so I'm going to, you know, do what I need to do to gain weight. And, you know, he really nurtured that and, you know, really nurtured the, you know, the, the weight training and everything, but never, ever, ever, ever pushed bodybuilding in any way, shape, or form. And, you know, me... I became a fan of bodybuilding on my own accord in high school. You know, one of the guys that I trained with, we'd... And it was when you were on your tear, so we'd be on, you know, this is going to be a throwback, but bodybuilding.com forums, you know, and the IFBB Pro Bodybuilding Forum was actually a thing there. And we'd always be looking at pictures like you, and one of my favorites coming up was Rolly, so it was really cool to compete with him at Tampa. But, um, you know, so bodybuilding was never, ever, ever, ever pushed. It was always, you know, football. And, you know, he pushed me hard in that. And, you know, not because he wanted anything for it, but because I told him, like, you know, I want to play it in the next level you know, I want to do this at a high level, was all district all through high school, was all state two years. And, you know, so he gave me everything I needed to do to succeed at what I wanted to succeed at at the time, which was football. We did, you know, all the scouting camps in the summer. He, you know, anything that I needed, he helped me out with. I was very fortunate and very blessed coming up. But, um, you know, as I got through high school, I truly got to the point where I was enjoying, enjoying training to play football just as much as playing football. And I injured myself my senior season. I played four games my senior season because I uh, tore my hamstring at preseason and then avulsion fractured my hip later in the season. So that was a blessing, a blessing in disguise. We'll get to that, though. So ended up signing a letter of intent to go play football up in Boston, school called Bentley University yeah, in course, Waltham. Yeah. So got up there, you know, rehabbed from those injuries, you know, had a really good preseason camp. You know, I probably would have gotten some playing time my freshman year, but you know, when it wasn't high school football with my best friends that I had been going to school with since sixth grade, and, you know, at that point I knew I wanted to bodybuild, not professionally, but I was like, yeah, I want, I, want, I want to bodybuild, you know. So I had already hurt myself. You know, I told you about those two injuries. I'd had three concussions. I dislocated my shoulder, broken my arm. You know, with football it's not a matter of if, it's when and how bad. You know, say you had more injuries before you were out oh, of yeah. high school than most yeah. pros have their yeah. whole career. Yeah, so – up until that point, hadn't had anything that was going to affect bodybuilding. But, you know, another four years of college football, who knows, you know, blow a knee out, you know, do something that could affect bodybuilding. Wasn't going to play on Sundays, but in my mind, I wasn't ready to stop being an athlete. You know, so enters bodybuilding. Bodybuilding was my thing that I wanted to do as my next step in my and how old were you at this athletic point? journey. So <laughs> I'm glad you asked that because it just made something click. Let me tell you how much my dad didn't push bodybuilding on me. Whenever I called my dad during preseason camp my freshman year and told him, I I'm done with football, man, I want to bodybuild, he says, okay, get a ride home from the airport. <laughs> he was <laughs> so mad about it. 
And uh, I actually remember going to a lunch with our uh, VP of sales, who was literally like family to us because my dad put him up to it. And he had me on the hot seat for an hour about how I need to go do this and how I'll regret it if I don't. And all of us die laughing about it now. But that's a good illustration of how much Lee didn't push bodybuilding on me. You know, so... um, I kind of wondered that, man, because that's the no. I don't. Man. I don't think anyone could wish bodybuilding on their son. Truly, uh, you know what? I, I don't if, know if they know what goes into it. I, I yeah, yeah, but listen, man. I I mean, listen. I've been retired now eleven years, and you know, I retired healthy, and I've had a very successful career. I think if you pace yourself and do it the right way, I still think it can be Absolutely. something that is extraordinary. And I need right? to put a like a disclaimer on that statement. I wasn't saying it like from a health standpoint mm-hmm. or like a wrecking yourself. I'm saying more from the. Uh, you know, the, the, time the, so, the, the social self, commitment self, and the selfishness, the, the, the way it, it steers your life. Yes. Yeah. I a hundred percent. So did you, so he said, get a ride home, but did you finish college there? So I did my freshman year there because it was, because it was a, it was scholarship. Yeah. Right? Too late to transfer and I was okay. on a scholarship there and really thought I was going to go back and finish out school there. Cause you know, for those of you that don't know, Bentley is um, top five in the country at the time for your undergraduate business degree, which was what I was going for. It was, you know, literally the trading room at the school. Uh, It was like if in case of an emergency at the Boston Stock Exchange, our trading room got plugged in and that was the emergency stock exchange for, you know, the Boston Stock Exchange. So it was a very, very good school. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go back. Summer happened. I went home. You know, I was extremely homesick. I'd grown up in Texas all my life. So, you know, going up to Boston was both a culture and a weather shock. The culture shock was awesome. You know, I loved the people up there. I loved the experience. What year was this? It was 2010 through 2011, okay, which was so historically the worst winter that Boston had had in like 40 years, knowing it's just my luck, right? Yeah, it snowed so bad in April, I almost didn't get to go home for Easter. <laughs> <laughs> so... Loved Boston. The getting dark at like three o'clock in the afternoon thing is really messed. But with you me. have your dad has a thriving business. So he people does. that don't know Labrada Nutrition, I mean, it's been around for forever. I mean, you guys are. When did he? When did it start? Ninety five. Okay. Yeah. When so he I was retired, born he in retired too, and then he retired. He retired and in ninety five. Yeah, yep. I remember. And uh, so he does. You know, obviously the RTDs, and I mean, obviously sports nutrition, whatever. But uh, so he has a successful business. So are you coming home? Are you doing a business degree based on, hey, I'm eventually going to roll into this business? Was that the thought process? Because you know this is going on. I mean, absolutely. Okay. So the thought process going to college was I was going to work at the business whenever After. I got it. Yeah. So ended up transferring to Texas A&M where I finished okay. out my college. I graduated with a degree in economics, actually, because... The plan at the time was I was going to go get my MBA after that. Okay, so you were there when Johnny Manziel was there. I was there for the entire wow. entire Johnny football saga, which is crazy. It I was mean, a very cool I time remember, to be at A and Yeah, I mean he he played until what fourteen he got yep. drafted right, yep. and then like when I was up there, you know, one year my uh, my next door neighbor was Jeff Fuller, which at yeah. the time was a, his re- receiver yeah. that broke the receiving okay. record. So it was it was a really cool time to be. So in college it's pretty station. cool to see all the documentaries that have come out now it on is. Johnny and it is. I mean. Was he was he like royalty and at A and M? He at that walked point? on water in College did, Station. Huh? Wow. Yep. <laughs> he just was, did an interview recently. I know, it but it's awesome. everything you can I imagine. Mean, they built some. they built the stadium off his success, and I mean, I wore his. I had a jersey and a hat from him. You know, back then he at that time, dude, he like transcended sports. Like, period. He was like hanging out with Drake. He was in yeah, like yeah, people yeah. and shit. He was mainstream. So you're mainstream. going to school there. Um, obviously not on scholarship. Did you have? Yeah. Okay, so maybe you just stop playing football. Stop playing football. Maybe that's why Lee was so upset because now he had to, you know, help out with the tuition a little bit. You know, <laughs> credit where credits due. Yeah. Um, you know, Lee's always been, you know, one of those guys that put school first. I kind of touched on the fact that you know straight A's were expected, and you got grounded if you didn't. And then I'll carry it one step further, and that I was very fortunate in that Lee was always one that you know as long as. We were going to school and doing well. He would take care of it. Uh, you know, it's funny. You know, the because second we weren't in school, we were on our own. But if we were in school, he was taking care of I it. I did hear that he didn't want to just put you in the business. He made your education the most important thing. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And then, you know, like, um, you know, working in the business, you know, from the time I was 15 years old, you know, yeah. every summer and every winter break, you know, 15 through 17 was, you know, riding around Houston doing orders, you know, 17 through 19 was like a little like office internship basically I was like everyone's office bitch and then got to sit in on the meetings you know during school I'd come home and have like a little bit better of a role I'd help in our R&D department with certificates of analysis and just kind of keeping things organized and then when I graduated school I came on full-time in our marketing department 
our online marketing department. And I worked at Labrada full time for about a year and I liked it. But at that time, you know, bodybuilding, you know, had become, you know, pretty front and center for me. You know, I was working at Labrada because I needed to, you know, obviously have a job, but it was, you know, I was all about bodybuilding. You know, it mm -hmm. was, I was smashing my four meals at work. I was getting my work done. You know, I was living to go to the gym when I got done and then, you know, go home, go to sleep, get up, do it all over again. And I was loving it, but I didn't want to be in an office, you know, in bodybuilding at that point between bodybuilding and then coaching, I, I, I was able to step away from working at Labrada full time and, you know, I was moved on to a, you know, more of an athlete role in Labrada and then started doing personal training and online coaching. And that was 2017, you know, right before I won nationals. So it was, uh, it was never anything that was like pushed on me, you know, to work in the business, work on the business. It was always, you know, do, you what, enjoy do, it, do what you want to do. I really enjoy the sports nutrition bodybuilding side of things. Like so Labrada has the pro series and we do, you know, like a hydrolyzed whey protein, a pump product you know, standalone creatine, glutamines. I enjoy, you know, sports performance. I enjoy, you know, like for the pump when I was actually, you know, r and Ding it, you know, saying what I wanted in it, going back and forth with the people. I find that very interesting. But as y'all probably know, that is not Labrada's bread and butter at all. It is our RTD. And that is a business that exists primarily in a mainstream market, you know, food, drug, and mass, grocery stores, things like that. And that doesn't interest me as much. It doesn't really, you know, set my soul on fire. If I don't will. think that was his original plan either, right? I it mean, wasn't. You know, it wasn't. Labrada actually started out Labrada Bodybuilding Nutrition, LBN. And uh, over the years, it's kind of, you know, snaked its way through, you know, its hit products. Y'all have been in the industry for yeah. so long. Y'all remember the bars. Y'all remember yeah. the MRP packets. And, you know, we've had our hits over the years. But the RTDs come on so strong for us. You don't think, just thinking years. about just hearing him talk about this, it started in 95, I mean, you're looking at almost 30 years. Yeah, it only took us 25 years to be an overnight success, right? Yeah, 20, it's kind of how it But goes you know how everything. many companies are out there and you see this massive success and then three years later they're gone. Well, Why do you think they've been around for 30 years? He got in at the right time, one. Two, he's always done right by the customer, in my opinion. You know that if it's on the label, it's on the bottle thing. It's not just, you know, advertising fodder. No schemes. No. We were, you know, doing the third-party testing. He from the jump was always sending off every batch. He really just cared about making a quality product. And, you know, that transferred over the years. People trusted it. He built the brand up. You know, obviously his success in bodybuilding, you know, played a large role in it. But, you know, it wouldn't stay alive because of his success in bodybuilding. No. At all. No. You know, it doesn't. We've seen so many ex-bodybuilders start nutrition brands and they're Two years here today, gone. gone tomorrow. You know, so... You know, even beyond that, you know, you it's very interesting, you know, because I always remember, you know, I said I worked in marketing, right? So I came on whenever Shreds was a thing. Yeah. Whenever Instagram was happening. And I was, like, just, like, so just, like, freaked out about how this company could come out of nowhere and have such a large yeah. market share. And, you know, he was always, like, give it two years. Give it a year. But he went you know, through – I'm sure he went through some Ups distress and um, in markets. I know that Absolutely. for sure. It hasn't always been, like – sunshine and rainbows of, of course like not, success no. right no but the fact that it's been there this long no i mean very, very, business is always and you know i when i did the podcast he sent me a nice little um he sent me the nice case yeah, you of drinks it. yeah yeah so i posted it and i tagged you guys i loved yeah. it man it was like uh i tried and they even had like a vegan one and he's so of, funny man right when you posted that yeah, he yeah. Called, he's like, did you see jay he got the box like yeah, like, yeah man i saw it he tagged <laughs> us in it he likes it he's our yeah, friend yeah <laughs> 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 He's yeah. funny on social media sometimes. Yeah, like so it. I mean, you know, for him to be a big inspiration to me, right? I mean, look, picking up the magazines and then now, you know, having a son that's knocking at the door, you know, and, you know, listen, you won Junior USA, right? Is that first show? Mm -hmm. Why did you do that show instead of going to nationals like everybody else? Because Everyone just I goes had right someone to someone telling me how to do it right in okay. my corner. You know, it doesn't make any sense to me, and I don't know how much you all want to talk about this, but... The current state of amateur bodybuilding, That's what I want to ask it doesn't you. make any sense to me because people go and get like second place at their, their local show. And qualify. And they qualify and yeah. then they go to straight to do a national show and they spend $5,000 to embarrass themselves in front of their friends and family. And, and 5000 you mean just for the food and everything. Yeah, travel, and everything. Every flight, yeah. tan, yeah, yeah. travel, entry, food, yeah. a coach, hotel. Yeah. hotel. Like, it's just crazy to me. And I think it comes from the fact that and I'm so thankful social media wasn't really a thing when I was coming up is that people are, you know, doing it for the wrong reasons. Did you, um, you, you know? walked in and won the juniors and then you went right to nationals. 
I did the juniors earlier in the year and then okay. went straight to Did nationals. you win your first time attempt at nationals? I did. I won okay. the overall at nationals. That's, uh, that's how I it, was. So I want to But, you know, given some history to that, I did my first show ever was Branch Warren show. That was like a big Texas local show. That was 2016. And you won Everyone that. was like, you're going to nationals this year, right? And I was like, no, I'll get wrecked. Next year, Europa, big regional show. Had watched John Jewett do it the year before. He won that show and then went on and won his class at USA. So I was like, okay, so this is a pretty good show. I'll do this one next. Competitive, big regional yeah. show. Won the overall at that show. Oh, you've got to be going because it was like three or four weeks later. It was I think USA is for the pro call. You got to be going to USA. He's like, no, I'm not ready yet. Next year, go to the junior USA's and you know win very convincingly. And at that point, he's like, yeah, let's go do it. And you know, a couple months at later, won the whole thing because I took my time. You know, if I would have gone after the first time, I would have gotten wrecked. If I would have gone after the second time, I would have gotten wrecked. I say, I say this even with even with pros nowadays. They'll do a show and they'll say, hey, you just got to get bigger. And they're like, okay, I'm going to do another show in six weeks. Like, what for? So you get your ass kicked again? Well, that's, it's, if your feedback at any level is you need to be bigger, you don't need to compete for another year. Yeah. Year. Take the time. Don't get it, back on stage until you're bigger. You don't need to compete for a year. <clears throat> so at what point did you and your dad have the conversation where he knew you were serious and it was, okay, gears are shifting. I know my son's going to do this. When did he become supportive slash fan like yeah. okay my son can really do this so i'd say we joke about this a lot i would say after the f like a year before my first show at that point you know i was going like 235 240 you know a little butterballish but you know i was yeah. I, was, I, I was a big kid yeah and, you know he could see it and he was like okay well you know you know it's fun to do with you you know you let's let's, let's do this mm -hmm. it wasn't until you know, the Nationals prep that he started seeing stuff. He was like, okay, well, you know, maybe, 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 maybe you could do this at the next level pretty, pretty well. But we've always both been pretty pragmatic about it. You know, if you looked at my physique, the one that I won Nationals with and told me, told me that was going to be a top six Olympia physique in three years, I would have been like, you are smoking crack. Yeah. You know, like, just call it what it is. And, you know, that goes back to, you know, our sport. Everyone's in such a hurry. You know, it took me. 10 years to realize what my genetics are. And that's coming from someone who spent zero time pissing in the wind and has above average genetics. You know, yeah. everyone's in such a hurry. I remember Hani saying that. Why are you in such a hurry to get your ass kicked? Well, and that's like you, like you, you go pro then what? Like you have what? Two or three years worth of you're either getting your shit wrecked or you're just faded off into obscurity, you know, like doing what you need to do to get ready. Yeah. But you know, did you, that? do you believe that you like when you started training just based on your genetics? I mean, you have a Cuban background, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I always wonder if you want to be the best Cuban bodybuilder out there. I know your buddy Sergio Oliva too. You know, he's he's got the Cuban genes too. There's right? been some of us, Gustavo Bedell. Yeah, yeah. Um, Lee, obviously. So, um, you know, did you? When did you be like, man? I can, I can be. Because, so, dude, you just walked in the room, and I was like, man, like the size. Put some weight on. You know, and your quality. And listen, you've been criticized with conditioning, right? Mm -hmm. Even, you know, you right got four, so. you got fourth right one so. year, you were sixth last year, right? Mm -hmm. um, we every year talk about you on this podcast and we think, okay, this is the year that you're going to put it together right and that cusp. be your best. Because I feel like if you come at your all-time best, and I know he wants to ask this because we're still trying to figure out what you consider your best. Like, what what's your mindset about, hey, I missed this. I mean, listen, I've done this too. So okay. I'm speaking of reference i mean listen i lost the olympia in the middle of my reign to dexter and people are like why did you come in off and you, you know sometimes there's not answers for it right but like is this is I your biggest 20, challenge 20 weeks coming into is, is your biggest challenge getting in like nailing it is that like a is that hinder like sometimes your confidence and when did you realize and how far do you think your potential is i want to know can you win the mr olympia can you win this thing? i believe i can Okay. I believe I can. And what is it going to take to do that? Talk a little bit about your on and off, your misses, your, I want, this is my absolute nailing it. Was it Tampa? Yeah. I mean. So e easy, easy, easy to tell you my best look I ever put on stage was Tampa Pro of last year. And you did Texas. Did Texas two weeks later. What, what do you think about the difference? I think I lost Texas because I couldn't control my midsection in rounds four and five. Okay. That's my opinion. It's, on it, it seemed like that show they just kept running you guys and running you, that's just my, waiting to see who. That's, that's my fell opinion out. on it. Yeah. yeah. So that is what it is. Um, 
And I'll preface those. Andrew's a fucking awesome bodybuilder, and I was with him two weeks ago in Austin, and we trained together and had a great time. It's all yeah. love between him and I. But um, <sighs> like, what is what's your best? I mean, your best is Tampa. Best is Tampa. I think so. This year, I'm gonna put on stage the Tampa conditioning with another ten to twelve pounds of tissue. Last year, Tampa went really well. That prep went pretty damn well. Um, things started getting a little wonky after Tampa leading into Texas. Whenever I finished up with Texas, my body just started not playing ball, you know, very much so not playing ball. It was a long year for me. Um, three weeks out from the Olympia, Ben and I had to talk about pulling me out of it just to give you an idea about how, like, off things were. I've been there. I've been yeah, there. so I know you've been there. Um, so I'm a big silver linings guy, though, and for us to have put on, you know, what we put on stage at the Olympia this year for a sixth-place finish, if you saw what I looked like on Monday, you'd be like, so I was really excited about that. You it pulled a, it together. Yeah, it was a silver lining, you know, headed into the off season because we knew the level of conditioning that we could have from Tampa, and then we had a major light bulb go off between prejudging and finals at the Olympia in terms of peaking me. And going back to what you said, you know, does it affect my confidence because I've had an issue, you know, like being ready and like really hitting that peak? Not at all. Let me tell you why. Uh, this last year's Olympia was my 11th show ever. You know, there's a lot Experience, of guys that yeah. have been on stage with me that have competed 30, 40 times, and they've been there, done this. They've they're still it. not nailing it. And they're still not nailing it. I, I've i I've done 11 shows. This year will be, you know, 12, 13, 14. I'm going to do two shows before the Olympia again this year. Um, haven't announced them yet. Don't get that exclusive. Sorry, guys. <laughs> but um, <laughs> um, he knows what they are. I already know. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um you know everything. <laughs> you got your crystal ball over there. Remember, he's got con he's yeah. got your competition yeah. too. You but know. Head, headed headed in, <laughs> yeah. headed into this year, I have those internal issues fixed. Like I'll just tell you, I had very bad SIBO, very bad candidate overgrowth, and very bad leaky gut between Texas and the Olympia. So that's what I was dealing with. Spent three months fixing it. You know, recently just stepped on the gas, and you know, proofs in the pudding about being fixed. I'm the biggest I have ever been in my life right now. Significantly leaner, and you know, I am coasting in terms of food and supplements so are you eating now or are we mixing things in a blender man i haven't blended food in two years <laughs> don't you know that sam sam's yeah, taking yeah, all the flack yeah. for that now <laughs> sam's getting all the shit for eating cereal sam and derek now yeah sam and derek are getting all the shit for eating cereal now <coughs> so you were putting everything in a blender for people that don't know you were like you were drinking everything you were shredding chicken breast in a blender yes. right yes so how we were talking about this how I, I, we that? had sean roden had to do that when his jaw was oh. broke yeah it just goes back to how off my stomach was because yeah, okay. i really think and this, all you open guys out there if y'all open guys all you big bodybuilders out there if you've mm. never had a gut analysis done go get one done and i don't know why y'all need to be told this but if you're going to the bathroom five or six times a day that's not normal go get a gut analysis done well, it depends how much you eat no, it doesn't. Oh, it doesn't. It, so, doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't. So biggest <laughs> obstacle of your career right now, is it training? Is it eating? The amounts of food you have to eat? I mean, you, are the you... The biggest obstacle, I would have to say, is my digestive health. Okay. Because I can put the food down Is easy. there specific foods you can't eat um, that you were eating before? <laughs> yes. So one of the worst things that you can eat for SIBO and Candidate, I found out, is uh, garlic and onions. And I was putting garlic and onions in every single meal I ate so for eight I. months straight. So that was a big yeah. light bulb when we had the GI analysis done. Um, you know, outside of that, we reduced the amount of whey protein I was consuming. Mm -hmm. I'm not one of those guys that thinks you know whey protein is lesser than whole foods. I'm really not. You know, chicken breast and whey protein. You look at the amino acid profile, very similar, very mm -hmm. comparable in my opinion. But I removed a little bit more of the whey protein, started eating more whole foods, and I feel like that really got my metabolism going more than anything. You know, my body actually having to digest things. It wasn't running through me. It gave me a little bit better satiety. So definitely uh, don't recommend blending food. You know, it was one of those things where at the time I was pushing pushing for size so hard because that's what I needed at the time. And, you know, it definitely goes back to that. It's not what you eat. It's what you absorb because, like I said, I'm bigger than I've ever been right now. So how many meals are you eating right now? Six right now. Okay. 300 grams of rice. So this meal. next prep that you're going into, do you think this could potentially be the first one where it's all green light? Yes. Yeah, I 100% feel like this is going to be, you know, and it was it was kind of one of those things because we were talking with uh, David DeMosquito, the guy who helped me fix my gut. And, you know, like for the Olympia, man, I was doing like an hour and a half of cardio a day for like leading into it because my body was just not responding. And I'm one of those guys that 
you know, like looks at the steering wheel for the first four weeks of prep normally and then doing 20 minutes in the morning for four weeks and then, you know, step on the gas and hit 230s for like the last couple of weeks or something. But you I've never been one of those guys that has to just sit there and pound myself with cardio. So, you know, having my gut fixed, I really feel like it's make a huge difference in the look because I'm going to be so much fresher not having to do all that cardio um, you know, David seems to think that this is going to be the easiest prep of my life after seeing my gut analysis. Cause he said, it's like literally the worst one he's ever seen other than one other one. So I'm very optimistic heading into this season. I'm very excited for it. You know, there's been a lot of speculation to a lot of these big time coaches come in and they coach people. Mm -hmm. Okay. You obviously have Ben and your wife behind you. Does that, is that an intimidation thing where you look at, okay, top six, I mean, you have, I'm sure you've had coaches approach you, some of these mm -hmm. bigger coaches, right? Tell me your, your, you know, why you keep it in that tight knit of people um, and have, believe in you and keep pushing you. So with coaching, I think. Because you've heard this, no, right? Absolutely. I mean, people say, why is Hunter, absolutely. you know, why, you know. Absolutely. So I think with coaching, it comes down to a couple things. You know, first, you know, you have to believe that the level of knowledge is there. You know, I think at the top level, you know, you have like, I could rattle off 10 guys. I feel like all of them have, you know, at least a certain level of knowledge, like in the pure like X's and O's of bodybuilding, mm -hmm. you know, but you get beyond that. And I feel like, you know, the thing that people like Hani does and the people like, you know, Ben with me does is they're able to, you know, bring intrinsic things out of their athletes from the relationships they have. You know, I grew up an athlete. I was always, you know, like a big, you know, like I wanted to perform well for my coaches and it's no different now. So that relationship that him and I have is something you know, that I've built over four years, three years with him. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the act, and then the other side of that is, you know, I've done five shows with him now and we're finally have, I feel like figured it out in terms of peaking me. He was going to ask this. You yeah. know, it's, I go to someone, I go to someone else and it's like, okay, well, how many Start shows over. does it take again? Yeah. We're starting over. That's like, it's like, it doesn't make any sense to me. The reason that Derek and Hani are so good is they've done a bunch of shows. The reason that Hadi and Hani are so good is they've done a bunch of shows. The reason that Chris and you are so good, yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's a you track record learned, thing. Yeah. But it's you a, need a coach. I mean, are you, you're coachable because you're an athlete. Mm -hmm. So when you do this conversation between Ben and yourself, and is, is it a collaboration where he s makes suggestions and you might say yes or no, or is it strictly I'm going to follow exactly what that person says? So Ben came in to coach me uh, probably like four weeks out from the Olympia that I got fourth at. So from that point until the next year's Olympia, it was pretty collaborative in that we very much so bounced off each other and arrive at what we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Went to that year's Olympia, absolutely shit the bed. It was the worst I've ever looked on stage. What'd you finish? Uh, I finished seventh after placing fourth the year before. And, you know, placing aside, because, you know, people come and go, it could be a different level of competition. I took a step back. I wasn't. I took a step back. After that, it was, you know, tell me how high to jump, tell me when to jump, and I will do it. And that's how it's been ever since, and we've seen what my physique's done. Since I, think, I think a lot of, just listening to athletes, I think a lot of, athletes don't talk to their coach and really dig in if the coach says i want you to do this explain how they feel like you have to have that open communication where you trust that person but at the same time a coach doesn't live in your body no. you live in it so and, you, you know, have like, to say how you're feeling and i talk about the intrinsic things you yeah. know it's like with ben you know it's been two and a half years now it's like i've just gotten to the point with him where i feel like i can be honest about how i feel yeah you know like in prep you know like even like not this year's prep but like last year's you know like, like, like how you doing it's like I could barely get out of fucking bed this morning and everything hurts and I can barely move, but it's like, I'm good, you know? And it's like, at least he knows. No, no, but I don't tell him that at oh. first. Like I'm, I'm at the point now oh, where yeah. I've done that, but then like, I wouldn't say anything. I was like, okay, well let's push, and, you know, like, my body would take a bad turn for it. Now I'm able to, you know, be honest in the feedback about it. I was like, dude, I am absolutely hammered right now. Like, and we're able to adjust accordingly. Yeah. And, you know, I feel like having that level of honesty with someone takes some time. It's, you know, it's needed. No one wants to be, you know, like perceived as weak minded. Yeah. And, you know, like, but, you know, sometimes you got to back off to get where you need to go. But if you nail it, like, when? Wh no. When I nail it. Yeah. When you nail it. I like that confidence. Where, where are you, I mean, what's holding you back from winning at all, the big one? I don't think anything. Yeah. I truly think, and this is, like, something that I've told myself for two years now. I've told myself, Hunter, you get hotty hard and all bets are off. 
And, you know, I know that's a really lofty thing to say because Hadi, like, literally looks like he's carved from granite. He's so conditioned. But I feel like I have the shape and then the size, you know, because Derek and Hadi, they're both, you know, mm-hmm. five foot five on a good day. Yeah. I'm five foot nine, borderline five foot ten. So if I'm able to get myself in truly, truly good shape, I feel like I, could, I can stand up there for sure. For sure. We said that a lot. We've always there's said not that. a lot of body parts that while wow, he needs to work on this or that. You're not is. missing anything. And you have a lot of roundness that a lot of guys just don't have. I know when you go to the gym and what's the project, what, what do you do every day when you go to the gym? Is it just to move a certain amount of weight? Or are you really still trying to actually, you're not trying to get bigger at this point, right? It's almost just, I mean, how much heavier do you want to so get? So I've said this because me and my dad talked about this the other day, and he was like, well, how much bigger are you trying to get? I, like, I am not trying to get bigger. I don't care about the scale, but I'm going to continue to train like I am training and continue to eat like I am going to eat for the next eight weeks and see what happens. You know, the priority since I stepped off stage last year at the Olympia has been my midsection. So that's kind Control. of the going, you know, factor of can we eat more? It's like, well, what does the midsection look like? You know, how's your digestion? So it's definitely the pr- front and centered thing. And that's another thing. I feel like if, uh, you know, I'm able to present some really deep chiseled out abs, I feel like that'll completely change what my physique looks like. So that's been a huge does priority. He, does, does Lee give you insight? Too? I mean, I, you have... You know, obviously Ben is your eyes, your wife, whatever. But I mean, what does Lee say when he you pose for him? Or absolutely, you? no, absolutely. So you've been to the, you've seen at least the gym yeah. setup. So, you know, half the time he's out there with us because he'll train later in the day. But if he's not, you know, anytime that I'm, you know, checking in and posing, I'll I'll give him a call and he'll come down and look and I'll get his honest feedback. You know, because sending you know videos to Ben's one thing, but you know, seeing eyes on is completely different. You know, so having those two sets of eyes, I really, it gives me a lot of confidence for sure. So every time you're posting up those, those pictures, like your dad, yeah, for my little corner, yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, he's somewhere around there. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's awesome. sure. As long as he's at the office, right? One other thing I, I, I wanted to bring up, cause we talked about this off camera. So your dad, you have a daughter and she is at every show. She's like the highlight of the show. Like whenever, I, whenever I see you competing, your family's right in the front. They're the first ones there. They sit there the whole time, but your daughter's always so active on your social media and everything. So explain that what that's like with your daughter and being a pro bodybuilder. Man, it's a, it's a huge blessing to be in the middle of my career with her at an age where she'll actually remember it. Yeah. Cause you know, I didn't have that with my dad. He was done before I had any actual recollection of it. And you know, the reason that I'm excited for her to see that is I'm excited for her to see, you know, like what hard work can get you, you know, because mm-hmm. she sees, you know, she's living her, see me more than anyone. Mm-hmm. You know, they say she sees me down and, you know, that's one of my biggest, you know, reservations with bodybuilding. That's a side note, but like, like how it affects, how it affects my time with my family. But, you know, like she sees how hard I work and she sees, you know, everything that we do to be successful. And then she sees that hard work come to fruition you know, at those shows and, you know, like what happens. So I think that's a really cool thing to be able to, you know, like show her. And then, you know, it's just, it's really cool. You know, I always say this at all my guest posing, you know, anytime I'm, you know, given a microphone, basically, it's uh, very blessed to do what I love with the people that I love for a living. And, you know, not a lot of people can say that. So it's cool to be able to provide an example for her. And then it's, you know, obviously incredible for her to be along for the ride. What are you going to do one day if she says I want to compete? Oh, because <laughs> her grandpa so, competes and her dad. Yeah, obviously, uh, definitely not something that I'd push her towards. Um, just knowing yeah. everything that goes into it, especially on the female side of things. Just, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know if it's something that I'd want for her. But, you know, at the end of the day, my dad would have said the same thing about me bodybuilding. So if that's something that she ends up deciding that she wants to do, I'm going to support her through it. I yeah. will say, though, that uh, I guess two days ago we were shooting my latest YouTube and she came with me to the gym because she was uh, out of school. And um, my uh, videographer actually set her up with her spare camera and she spent the whole time like taking pictures and stuff and she could not stop talking about it for like the next two days. So maybe so we got, got a, a little videographer? videographer on her yeah. hands, right? Oh, there you yeah. go. You know, we, we, could, we look at what goes on. I mean, I, I'm obviously promoting events. You're coming out for this. Uh there's no one that guest poses more than you on the circuit right now. Not, not at all. It seems like you've had a crazy schedule and a little history. You don't remember this probably, but it's funny full circle. You know, Remy obviously promotes the show here with me for this. And obviously you guest pose for him. I was in Michigan doing an appearance from several years ago and your father called me 
And he said, hey, I need help because we want to start getting Hunter on the circuit to guest pose. And we wanted to know kind of the contracts and what is based. And I actually sent him. When I was still have it on my phone, I when ba- I was I based my little runner up, when I was with Re- <laughs> when I was with Remy at doing an appearance for Remy is when you I was walking in the gym in Michigan, which you've been out there to yeah, guess pose, yeah. uh, and I was you, you know your father called me and I said okay I'll send it over and I actually sent it and that was the beginning of you doing this whole networking and getting out there and guest appearing. Do you love it? I mean what what do you like about getting out there? I mean you're not afraid to be in front of a camera. You're one of the few that puts up your prep pictures. You love getting on a crowd. So I understand the Haroli with the hat now. Okay, is this where that hat, <laughs> when you guess pose, comes from? It's because Roly did it. <laughs> the only time you ever see him without a hat is when he's on stage. Yeah. I will, <laughs> not, I will never, posing. ever, ever have to worry about someone posting an off-season guest posing picture and trying to say it came really out of shape to a contest. Because I'm yeah. always in a hat if it's a guest posing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, I mean, honestly, and I'm not trying to sound overly dramatic when I say it like this, um, getting the guest pose is the biggest honor in pro bodybuilding. You know, in my book, you know, because someone thinks highly enough of you that a not only will you draw people to their show, but, you know, B, they think highly enough of you that you're going to interact with the people that came out like in a positive manner. So anytime I go out to guest pose and I think this is why I'm always, you know, have like brought back out and, you know, do as Mm -hmm. many of them, you know, is always show up to check ins, always show up to prejudging, always show up to finals, you know, finals backstage, trapping up with the guys the whole time and. You know, I always joke around with people because I hear so many horror stories about guest posing. It's like, even if you didn't want to do that, put a face on and do it for two hours. But, you know, me, I love doing that. Like I said, I think it's the biggest honor in bodybuilding is getting to guest pose. And, you know, those, and you're the king of this, you know, those 30 uninterrupted seconds you spend with someone where you give them every last bit of your attention and truly hear what they're saying, they will never, ever, ever, ever forget that. Were you surprised when you, every year it's like, it's like your grandfather and mm-hmm. basically given, the same work it's kind of like having endorsement deal right where it's like you're returning to do these guest appearance i mean it must yeah. be pretty cool because dude there's no one in the circuit really doing these guests there's posings. a lot of people that do the guest posing i don't know why either because yeah. there's times where all the promoters call me and they'll just be like i can't get anybody i can't get anybody to guest post like, i think what? you know it comes down to a lot of guys don't like to travel you know which i understand if you need to stay yeah, but none of us in. do <laughs> i mean i see you bring your food and everything you got everything and always you know. i mean if you if you prepare for it, it's pretty damn easy yeah. to do. You know, got a rice cooker back in the room, brought the proteins, yeah. brought the cooked meats with me. We're good to go. You he even messed me ahead of time. He goes, "You guys have a microwave there?" I said, "Yeah, it's in back." Yeah. I said, "Okay." <laughs> Proper preparation prevents poor yeah. performance. Nod nod down a steak last night, cold because they don't believe in microwaves and hotel rooms here in Las Vegas. But that's so neither you were you were at the Arnold. What did you think? I as, think we're as, as finally back judge. to pre-COVID Arnold in terms yeah. of the expo. It was nuts there. And then, as far as the show goes, I think uh, I think our man Steve here got it right. Yeah, I think he got it right. Yeah, no. Um, you know, I don't care. <laughs> I'll never say it though. When, when, Even when if he, I think when it, he loses, right? It's your fault. No, but the Arnold men, the men's open. They all brought it. It was really fun to watch. Um, Were you impressed with Hottie? I, I was just about to. I was really getting my words together for that man for. Uh, you know, being an athlete and a competitor, you know, take the bodybuilding out of it, you know, just replace it with any sport for someone to get knocked off like that and then have that kind of response. That's a champion's response. And that was very cool to see, um, you know, and it was really cool for me. I actually saw him the day after on Sunday at the expo. You know, he was getting walked through with all the security and I wasn't going to try and go up and bother him. Yeah. But, you know, like we locked eyes and he ran straight over to me, gave me a yeah. big hug and a kiss. So he, he's a good guy, man. And I was really excited to see, you know, it's like a, you know, you can either, you know, stay down or get back up. And that man jumped up. So it was cool to see. You could get, if you could stand with anyone on the circuit that you have, haven't had the opportunity for a little bit of time, who would it be? Oh, man. You want to stand with Hottie or like, what do you think? Yeah, I want, I want the whole, like I want the whole top five again. No, I want, I want Hottie, Brandon, Derek, Nick will be back this year. Yeah, you know, what about you Nick want to Walker? compete against the best? What about what are you thinking about Nick Walker? I think Nick's a good dude, and I think he's going to shock some people this year. Um, you see his updates? I do. Yeah, no, I do. Yeah. I think he would have been right in there at the mix with Hadi and Hadi and uh, Derek last year. If I'm being completely honest, I'll give props where props are due, for sure. I so, said, yeah, we we've said that openly. He, I think he had a very he good just chance gets, of winning. He gets freaky conditioned, man, and he's like like me. He's not short. He's a you know he's not taller, but he's a tall enough where it looks. Yeah, when he's standing next to them, you know. Yeah. So, 
this year, go, this way. this year going. Obviously, the Arnold's just ended. Now we're gonna slowly go through the year, and I think this year's Olympia could be a. I think it'll be more exciting than last year's. Yes, for there's sure. a bunch of guys that could. I think it's already going to be more exciting, and we don't have any of the storylines that are going to come from all the shows this year. Is it enticing when Schwarzenegger out announces 500K for next year's <laughs> Yeah, because you've never done it. <laughs> yeah, no, I haven't. And, uh, you know, next year, uh, we Lord the, willing. And the we power, have an announcement the, on here? And the powers that be willing, as long as I can get an invite, I will be applying for it. So Wow, we, just, we got yeah, a, we got yeah, a we invite get an here. announcement. I will be applying for the Arnold next year. I don't so. think anyone... Uh, Anyone in their right mind wouldn't ask for an invite to that contest. I'm pretty sure if you about, ask, I, I was think thinking you, about you got a good up, chance you know. of getting. Hopefully, you know, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. I said that to Angelica too. She's like, I have to apply. I'm like, you won four of them. I think they'll let, I think they'll let you get by. Grandfathered in, right? <laughs> but, yeah, is that on your bucket list? I mean, I mean, I have, I have three. You know, no, absolutely. You know, at this point, I think it's borderline weird that I haven't done an Arnold. You know, with my past placings and stuff. And the only thing that's come down to is. Um, like just the timeline on it, you know, because every single year I've had to qualify before the Olympia and do the Olympia. So by the time we finish with the Olympia, I've been, you know, running and gunning for 24 to 30 weeks. And then my first year, the Olympia was in December, the Arnold's in March. Yeah. So you're 12 weeks out the second you walked off stage. The next year it was November and then was in March. So it was still, you know, 16 the second you walked off stage. And my body's tired after I get done competing. So this year, you know, I'm planning on planning on doing it because the timeline works very well for me. 500K, you could buy a really nice watch. You could buy a very nice watch with 500K. <laughs> I would hope you punch me in the face, though, if I buy a buy a watch with those not, things. Not all of it, but a piece of it. <laughs> hey, I mean, we were talking about investment pieces. Well, but just just 500, older 500 grand worth. Right? Do you have time, though, to really, I mean, you guys talk about, like, a hobby, if it's collecting or whatever, but what else do you have time to do in, in your schedule? So obviously you live the lifestyle for forever. The priority number one is always, you know, what we do for a living and what puts food on which the table. Which is why which you're, is the body the biggest stress, yeah. You know, so, you know, daily my mind's revolving around, you know, you lived long enough to know you've got that internal three-hour alarm that's going off. And you're like, where's my food? And, you know, you get anxious if it's not there. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, but, you know, outside of that, I think I kind of lost my train of thought. What do you, what's your day like? You, daily, you daily, yeah. So out, outside of, you know, really making sure, because I get very anxious if I don't, like, feel like I'm taking care of business and checking my boxes. Like, it really just throws me off. So, you know, outside of that, you know, the main priority for me, and this is, you know, a new thing for me, but it's, you know, being present and in the moment with my family. You know, because so much, um, you know, positive comes from that. I'm a really big believer that if your home life isn't right, that bodybuilding won't happen right. Does so, social media take take time from your that situation though? I mean, you mentioned YouTube. I mean, how important is the social media aspect in today? Because I feel like to have a little success, you kind of have to be a crossover between a competitor and social media. So you absolutely, you know, gone are the days of the six figure weeder contracts. Mm -hmm. As much as I'd love to be living in that time still and truly just be able to. If I didn't make a living off social media, I wouldn't have it. That's my opinion of social media. But obviously, you know, the day and age we live in, we have to have it and. I try to treat it as a positive thing, you know, give people, you know, the updates to me that they want to see, you know, I'm, like I said, a big, you know, equipment training nerd. So I really do enjoy training, you know, sharing training footage and, you know, tips and technique stuff with people that makes me feel fulfilled. You know, anytime I have mm -hmm. someone go, oh, this made a big difference for me, or, you know, I'll see someone in a guest pose and go, you know, that one video, this tip made such a difference. Like that's cool for me. That's fulfilling. So I find a lot of positive, you know, energy from doing that, but you know, it doesn't take a ton of ton of time daily, but it's one of those things that, you know, it can, it's always hanging there. And you know, your body you at this point is feeling, I mean, you've had a lot of injuries from football. Mm -hmm. Do you still have some hesitation, whether it's be in your training program or like, do you have some aches and pains from that situation? Or how do you keep your body healthy? Because I know you're a tissue advocate, yeah. right? I mean, so I'm a big time tissue tissue work advocate. Yeah. Definitely get work done twice a week. I feel like that makes a big difference. And, you know, any time in the past that I haven't kept up with that, it's gotten significantly worse. Um, but injuries? Injuries-wise, I don't really feel like football's left any, like, lingering yeah. effects on me other than, you know, I guess everything in my life kind of stemmed from a football injury. But whenever mm. I broke that arm and dislocated the shoulder up here, that set me on the – path of having to have the shoulder surgery and everything but I don't have any aches and pains that I would consider abnormal for what I do you know 
obviously I have a good bit of aches and pains, you know, in day to day life, mm -hmm. but I'm also, you know, doing some pretty obnoxious things to myself in the gym on the daily. Anytime I go take a trip or take five or six days off, I feel pretty damn fresh still. So, and I think that comes down to just training smart, you know. And what time of day you usually train after how many meals? I'll train after two meals. I'll typically okay. get to the gym at two and be moving weights around by like 245. The most important question. Oh, here we go. You at your best, your dad at your best. Who wins and why? In his judging criteria or modern day judging criteria? It's all the same. Though. Ask Steve. What's criteria? <laughs> Kill, I, I, the judging's ju always been the same. Strictly off of bodybuilding criteria, I would beat my dad on a bodybuilding stage. That being said, <laughs> I think I think he obviously his his career is still light years ahead of mine. So yeah, we'll see. What do you think, Steve? What do you think, Steve? I think you follow the beaches still. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. And what I've seen so far. Okay. But you're going to prove him wrong this gotta year. Got to change that this year for sure. Definitely. Yeah. Got to change you that this great, year. But Absolutely. Your father at his best was wicked. Why is, why is your father still so motivated? Because he looks tremendous at 60. Like, he may be one of the better retired. I think he's the best. Yeah. How old is he now? He's just turned 64. Wow. Still shredded. And he's still shredded. His diet, we talked about this when we did the podcast, his diet is super strict, right? He says he does, go, when you guys go on your vacation, like you've done the family trips. Mm -hmm. and Because you did like what is, did you do Israel? I did Jordan. Jordan. That's right. That's yeah, right. I did yeah. Jordan twice last year. I Pretty love, cool, I love, right? I love yeah. it there, man. I love it there. It's a, it's a cool place for Cause sure. Because you had a distributor that you were visiting over there, yeah, right? Yeah, good friend on Cabaretti. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. Cobb's there. Yeah, we That's went, we we went. went in yeah, 2016. Yeah, super cool. Dude, guy. Jordan's a beautiful, we went... We went over, and I was shocked because when I mentioned, hey, we're going to Jordan, this is how many years 16. ago? 16. Okay, Eight years 20, ago. Yeah, so people are like, oh, my gosh, is it safe to go there? And they don't understand. It's, like, probably more The safe country than, north there's a, there's isn't a safe. Lot, there's a lot of Islamophobia here in America. Yes. <laughs> if you go north to Syria, it might not be safe, yeah. but Jordan is yeah, Jordan it's safer is, than here. Yeah. Yes. Especially, like, the big, the big cities like Amman and stuff. It's very westernized. I haven't. You have the size, you have the shape. Yeah. It, we, we, yeah. we, your father's condition. Not that I don't want you to think I'm thinking your father's better than you, but condition. Condition, yeah. Absolutely. Always been, I've never seen him compete out of condition. That was one thing, never off. Never. Never off. So maybe he can be in charge of your conditioning. <laughs> I wish it was that yeah. easy, man. I I don't you, don't you wish you could just, okay, just turn yeah, a just key and it's like, right in, yeah. Yeah. Or just it be simple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. I mean, do you ever look at some of that? And, I mean, who is your role models? Like, who 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 do you look at? Do you look at some of your competitors? Or do you, is there, like, a favorite pro bodybuilder that you've looked at as an inspirational factor? <laughs> no, not All right. Stage. Um, I'll blow smoke up Jay's ass. No, I'm not kidding. It's, it'll all be true. But, um, I always tell people this and I have this conversation with people a lot. There are two people in our industry that I admire for how they've handled everything. And that's you and my father, mm -hmm. you know, for the success that you all had on a bodybuilding stage. One, the success that they've all had in business after, but the third one, and, uh, this is the most important is the kind of men you are, you know, it's, uh, you know, you, Never hear anyone say a crossword about Lee. You never hear anyone say a crossword about Jay. The only thing you hear is how, you know, Jay stays till the last fans there. And then, you know, like how Lee has always been, you know, this or that, you know. So that's what I admire in our industry. And I admire you for that a lot. That's awesome. I, uh, you know, it's always honorable to, you know, I always respect the fact, you know, the up, up and coming guys, you know, they always need something to shoot for, right? And I always wonder, like, because now I would didn't have to deal with the social media, right? We were magazines, and I was always respectful to Ronnie Coleman. I mean, that's one thing. If you ever watch me win or lose, I reacted the same. Mm -hmm. So it was always like I smiled when Dexter beat me. I smiled when Phil, and when I won the Olympia, I smirked, and I was quick to raise, you know, Branch's hand, Ronnie Coleman, whoever was second, right? It was just a respectful thing to me. And I think that, you know, because there's so much at – hand like we we all strive to get the ultimate title and win prizes sometimes when you enjoy the lifestyle and you're blessed to be able to do it at that level i feel like it it's like we all win right we all rise up and everyone's going to have their time right just like you know you might have finished fourth and you thought wow i'm going to go now to third and second whatever and you felt fall back right and now 
you're working your way back six last year, probably still not satisfied, right? Because what's going to be satisfaction? Winning the big one, right? I mean, it's elusive at this point. Now we're talking on this podcast, what you need to do. It seems like you've never been more in line with, okay, I figured my body. And when we were talking before we had you on, it was like, is this the year? You know, is this the year you're going to figure it out? And obviously, you know, you're, you're going to compete. You said two more shows prior to getting to Olympia in, yes. September, in October. Yep. And do you feel like Vegas is more of an advantage than Florida on peaking? Or is it really not matter to you? Do you think you can figure your body out no matter what the climate is or landscape or whatever else? Because you, let's see, you, so you got fourth in Florida. Mm -hmm. And then you got seventh in Vegas. Okay, and, and then, then sixth, last back in, in Florida. Okay, was it Florida. Yeah. Was it Florida? Light, was lights, lights are on. No one's home for that. What was last for me? year? Last year was Florida. Florida. Yeah. Okay, okay. I get confused because we're so many bouncing back. But now it's in Vegas to stay. I want all my titles in Vegas. I moved to Vegas. I lived in the climate. I felt like I had an advantage, but I still didn't nail it every time, mm -hmm. right? But what? Uh, I feel like your body's just in tune, really, at this point, better than it's ever had have been. It seems like your confidence is there. I mean, you can clearly stay. I, I'm coming to win the big one. You know, I mean, this is what it is. So when I ask you who you want to stand next to, it's like you want to stand next to the best, right? Yes. You want to battle with Nick Walker. I mean, he's kind of like the up and coming. I mean. Absolutely. I missed him at the O last year for sure. Um, you know, this year for me, um, it's about putting it all together for sure. You know, I, I've kind of had themes for each year, if you will, in my head. You yeah. know, last year. The entire time it was about making myself proud, you know, just because after the O last year, I, I was so just personally disappointed in the performance. And well, you, you had know, a just, lot of hype, you know, Tampa, well, yeah, they the, said, oh, he finally figured it out. Mm -hmm. And then you had had the set, you know, basically you said your body just wasn't reactive, yeah. right? So, you know, going into it, knowing what I know, I am supremely confident that I'll be able to get to that level of Tampa conditioning. My body's never been, you know, healthier and more responsive. And, you know, like I said, I think that level of conditioning, you know, even even for even further than him, I really think there's still there's still another gear. Well, of course, I, you I have really to do. be because you really said do. you're bigger than last. I really last do. Year so I think putting I think this year is about putting it all together. And I think we will do that for sure. You're going to win the Olympia this year. I am going to do everything that I need to do to put myself in a position to do that. It's all you can do. Yep. Yeah. I always tell everyone any of the athletes are like, I want to do this. This just. You just want to be compared next to who you want I'm to be a, in circulating. I'm a, with I'm the a big proponent of speaking it into fruition, so I don't want it to sound like I'm not confident in saying I want to win the Olympia this year. But uh, the goal for me is to be my best ever. Are you scaling back your travel a little bit to focus on the training? And I, mean, I know you're limited. So I got this, this one, year. and then um, I'm going to be at the New York Pro uh, to support the boys out there. And then after that, I'm going to be on a tear next year. Let's just say that, Steve. Is, is this another uh, announcement here? <laughs> yeah. 2025, you're doing New York Pro? <laughs> Matt's getting his money's worth out of this so, one. You know, no, but you're, so, you know, you'll get to train. Have you trained at Steve's gym before? I have. Yeah, no, I yeah. have. Actually, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the last time I was out there was before I was a pro yeah. with Patrick Moore. You took a look yeah. at him. Yeah, so it's been way too long. It's so it's, it's, I was going to say, it sounds like you, this is a yeah, long drought. I need to, I need to, to go a, get my pictures in Steve's room. I, th yeah. I, I think you need to come in like two days early this time and go spend a little extra time out there at Steve's yeah. gym. Absolutely. Make sure to check out all the pieces that you don't have. Maybe he has some stuff you need. I mean, is there Drive a, a U-Haul <laughs> truck up there? <laughs> is there, is there a, a, a limit on how far are you going to go in bodybuilding? Like, do you have a, like a set plan or are you kind of just taking it year to year? And I mean, you still love it, right? I, I do absolutely love it. Um, and like, you know, it, when you do shut it down, like, is there, is, is Lee like, Hey man, you're coming over here to do this. And you mentioned, you know, you have other brothers, right. Mm -hmm. That are working in the business, right. You have the youngest one. Yeah, the youngest one's out in Denver doing uh, outside sales for Labrada. And then the middle okay. one actually is going to be concluding his MBA in uh, May and he'll be out to California. I, I'm Austin. curious to see the young one. Now you're going to have to send me. Oh a, yeah. A I'll show you some pictures for sure. I want to see yeah, this. I mean, because the sure. gene pool is crazy, right? What does your mom think of all this? I mean, we didn't ask much about your mom. Like, when you decided she to do the bodybuilding. She loves the fact that her boys are doing what they love to do. She thinks it's really cool. You know, 
Because my mom, my mom's about as uh, that thick and thick and thin through bodybuilding as could possibly be. My of mom course. did my first two tans because for the entirety of my dad's career, she did all of his tans. Mm. You know, she was his eyes like on the road when they were doing the European Grand Prix. Uh, I always joke she's got a better eye than probably just about every coach out there, except. For so the we top should be Olympian asking coaches. about what your mom say about this. Yeah, like, right? Is she she yeah. in the gym checking you out, or are you just like so? Towards the end, as I start getting okay. truly in shape, she'll she'll actually yeah she'll be looking too. She's she's seen me over the years, and uh, you know my parents have a uh, garage out in the uh, at their house, obviously, but it's converted into a gym, and they have mirrors out there and everything. And you know, not this year, but last year and the years before that, I'd actually go and practice my posing routines with her from time to time. How far do they live from where you are? Twelve minutes. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, parents twelve minutes away, the gym's fifteen away, the grocery store is five away, and that's about all we need, right? <laughs> so, so when you're done competing do you plan on going and working for the for the company when i'm done competing if i'm going to be honest with you i don't know if the company will still be ours yeah you know just the way that it is heading and the level of success that we're having with the rtd it's definitely you know something that could be on the horizon you know lee riding off into the sunset which he absolutely deserves even if that's not the case when i get done um i could see myself working on the you know performance product sides of things but you know, like I said, the R- RTD sales and working, you know, in more mainstream, you know, distributors and shit, it doesn't really bring me a lot of personal excitement. And what's really yeah. important for me after bodybuilding, you know, like whatever I land on, I, it, it needs to be something that I'm passionate about. So I haven't figured out what that's going to be yet. But, uh, you know, that's one of the exciting things I'm looking forward to over the next like three or four years, because it's definitely been you know, something that's really entered my mind in the last year or two, you know, like what comes after bodybuilding. I know what he's going to do. I'm going to pick this dude's brain about it for sure. While he is going to launch his own independent research and development company. Because then everyone pays you to do what you love to do. Right. And you can work for everybody. Right. It's awesome, man. <laughs> we'll figure it out for sure. Well, listen, we appreciate you coming on, man. I'm excited to see you up there tomorrow night to rock the crowd. They're excited to see yeah, you. Is and awesome. uh, is this going to be your best guest posing to date? Oh, look, for sure, dude. Look. For sure, yeah. Are you going to peel down and jump up there? No, no, I know better than that. I'm not, you know. <laughs> I know I did that with Regan last year. Did you fit, really? Well, fit for 50, you okay. know. I was, I was in shape. Like, I didn't hit too many oh, poses. I remember seeing those Mil- 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 Milos yeah. was a little upset because he's like, why didn't you do all the quarter turns? And I'm like, no, nah, 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 come on now. Of course, Milos is <laughs> <Yeah>. upset. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I have to compare you. I'll put you all through three rounds. Well, listen, we can guess what your shows are going to be for the season, but, you know, it all matters when you land back in Las Vegas here. I'm excited to uh, hopefully we'll have you back on, and uh, we wish you the best of success. Yeah, man. I can't wait. Next time I'm in Vegas, we'll be for the Olympia. So looking forward to it. Awesome. All right. We're out.